What's up guys? This episode we're talking about how to send messages back and forth between users in your Rails application. We're going to use a gem called Mailboxer for this. This gem's been around for like five years, still continuously getting updated, but I haven't seen a lot of updates on Ruby gems, so we're going to use the master branch for this. Now, Mailboxer is actually designed to give you an interface that's actually a lot more similar to, say, email clients than a regular old messaging system. So it might surprise you a little bit, but there's actually an inbox, there's a sent box, there's an all conversations area, there's a trash area, um, and that's not common in things like uh, Twitter direct messages, but even Facebook's uh, messaging is going more in this direction as they were, you know, experimenting with uh, going after email. So Mailboxer adds all that functionality, but you don't have to use it. So it's all entirely up to you. So we're going to install this gem into our Rails application here. And uh, this Rails application is just very simple. All it has is device and one route. So let's open up that real quick. There's just a home page. That's all it is, and it doesn't do anything. So I just have device installed, and it's simple as that. So let's add Mailboxer in from the Mailboxer GitHub repository. Um, because the last time that this gem has been updated was in like 2005, like July or something. So using this for master is probably the best idea, and hopefully it's pretty stable. Um, I don't see it changing that often, so if you want to make sure that you're on a very stable version, you can probably use the latest version on Ruby Gems. But if there are any fixes that came into the, the master branch, uh, you might want to take a look at that. So that's up to you to choose, but really the installation is very simple. Um, you run Rails Generate Mailbox or Install, that adds some uh, an initializer and some migrations. Run your migrations, and if you want to, you can generate mailboxer views which are just the email notification templates they're not views for anything um related to the mail or messaging system uh, that's built in now mailboxer is actually designed to give you an interface that's actually a lot more similar to say email clients than a regular old messaging system so it might surprise you a little bit but there's actually an inbox there's a sent box, there's an all conversations area, there's a trash area. Um, and that's not common in things like uh, Twitter direct messages, but even Facebook's uh, messaging is going more in this direction as they were you know, experimenting with uh, going after email. So Mailboxer adds all that functionality, but you don't have to use it. So it's all entirely up to you. So we're gonna install this gem into our Rails application here. And uh, this Rails application is just very simple. All it has is device and one route. So let's open up that real quick. There's just a home page. That's all it is, and it doesn't do anything. So I just have device installed, and it's simple as that. So let's add Mailboxer in from the Mailboxer GitHub repository. Um, because the last time that this gem has been updated was in like 2005, like July or something. So using this for master is probably the best idea, and hopefully it's pretty stable. Um, I don't see it changing that often, so if you want to make sure that you're on a very stable version, you can probably use the latest version on Ruby Gems. But if there are any fixes that came into the, the master branch, uh, you might want to take a look at that. So that's up to you to choose, but really the installation is very simple. Um, you run Rails Generate Mailbox or Install, that adds some uh, an initializer and some migrations, run your migrations, and if you want to, you can generate Mailboxer views, which are just the email notification templates. They're not views for anything um, related to the mail or messaging system uh, that's built in. And then last but not least, you have to do acts as message -able, um inside the file to add all the uh, the mailbox methods, the send message, like the reply to conversation methods. All of those come from this, uh, this method that you'll add in there. First things first, let's open up the Rails console and test and make sure that this is working. Now I've got two users in the database already um, and we can load up the first user and let's just assign that to the variable u. And you should have a method called send message, which allows you to send a message to another user. 
and this starts a conversation. So this is gonna say, let's pass in the user that we wanna talk to, and this could be an array if you uh, want to support multiple users. We'll talk about that in the next episode. And then it takes a body and a subject. And when you send this, you'll see that a bunch of things get added to the database. The first one is that you create a new conversation, then you create some notifications, uh, and a receipt, and then another receipt down here. So what this is doing is setting up a conversation um, and then returning a receipt object. And this is important because we'll use that um, in the controller in the future. So we're basically gonna set up a controller now we'll call this method for us, um, and that is how we're gonna integrate this with our Rails application. So this uh, mailboxer gem basically gives you these associations and methods on your uh, models, and it's up to you to set up the controllers and the views for everything. So with that said, let's dive into building our routes. Now we're gonna need routes for all the conversations that you have so we're going to make a resources conversations feel free to mess or free, feel free to name this whatever you would like um, but conversations is probably going to be one of the easier ways to organize this because you're going to also have a nested resources for messages in order to send a message to a specific conversation so keep that in mind you'll need to uh, have both of these uh, nested resources here um, and those will be associated with one another. So your naming probably needs to be careful about, um, you know, maybe you don't want to call the top level one messages because you'll also need that nested one and that makes it a little harder to name that one. So let's go create our conversations controller. So let's edit app controllers conversations controller.rb and conversations controller should inherit from application controller and we'll have our index method in here which will get all the conversations um, and we'll load that through the current user and there's a method called mailbox that uh, is talked about in the readme this is what um, every user will have they'll have a mailbox which is a list of all of the available mailboxes so that might be a little confusing, but basically you have inbox here, you have sent box, you have the trash, and also just all your conversations. So we're gonna use that by default, but you could use the inbox if you want your application to work that way. Um, and then let's also make the directory for app views conversations, and let it, let's edit the app views conversations index.html.yearb file. And so here we'll have all conversations and we'll loop through each of those conversations. Sations dot each do conversation. And we'll create a link to uh, view the, that conversation. So we'll have a link to the conversation dot subject. Um, and if you wanna see all the columns that are available for each of these, open up your schema file and look for the mailbox or conversations uh, table, which is very short, it simply has a subject. Um, and so that way you'll be able to access those uh, attributes and this will help give you an idea of what's available to use in your views. So I'll link to the subject text and then we'll have a conversation path and we'll pass in the conversation. And you're gonna have to explicitly say conversation path here because if you leave that out, it's gonna look for the uh, scoped model names path, which would be, because um, all of these are scoped inside the mailboxer module. So it would look for mailboxer conversation path, which would mean that your resources routes have to be different. Um, so that is what I would recommend is to always just pass in the path explicitly. So here, we should be able to go to slash conversations now, and we'll see that conversation, which is awesome. So we can't click on it yet, otherwise we'll get this missing action and missing template error. So now we have to go back to conversations controller and set up the show action. Now this one's pretty much gonna be the same. We'll look up the conversation, we'll also use the same uh, association 
uh, and we'll say params ID just like you would with any uh, normal active record model. Now the important thing here is that you use, oops, this should be current user. The important thing here is that you use that association so that you don't allow users to just change the ID in the URL and read other people's conversations. That wouldn't be good. Um, so you'll want to scope that to the current user for that reason. And then we can add app views, conversations, show.html erb. And here we can print out the conversation.subject. And now we can also print out, um, we'll also want to print out all of the, oops, conversations, controller, params. And here we'll want to print out all the messages. Now this is set up a little bit differently than you might expect. So let me walk you through this. So we have a conversation and a com conversation doesn't have messages. It actually has receipts. And you're gonna want to loop through each of those receipts. And in those receipts, they're linked to messages. So here you can say, um, let's print out the receipt dot message dot body, which will be the message body that you typed in. And you'll see that, well, in our controller, we only type this in one time, but it's showing duplicate. And if we go to this, we also have um, reference to the sender on the message. So the message has a method called sender, and um, that is a user object. So sender would be a user or any of the uh, models that you set acts as messageable. So acts as messageable um, could be used on users, admin users, um, any other user uh, objects that you would like. And mailboxer is polymorphic, so this could be a user object, an admin user object, and so on. So long as they all share the same name, uh, method name, you'll be able to say, you know, that user commented and put that in a div before your text. And so let's go down here and put a paragraph tag around the body. And you'll see that user one commented two times, but we definitely didn't do that. We only did it one time. And that's because these receipts have to go and be created for every single person in the conversation. So you are in the conversation, yours is automatically going to get marked as red and you don't need to see your own posts. So you actually have to scope this and say receipts for, which is a method that they provide, and you pass in the user that you wanna display these receipts. So this will uh, scope down all of the receipts so you only see the ones that you should be seeing. And that allows each user to mark these as red. So when we refresh it, you're only gonna see it one time now. But the other user, user number two, is gonna be seeing the exact same thing, only one reference of this, but you and that other user will be able to mark these as read independently. And that's the important piece here. Um, but you don't have to take advantage of that. Uh, that's a feature of Mailboxer that we'll cover in a future episode, but um, that's the way it's defined. So you actually have to make sure that you use this receipts for method in order to scope these so you don't get duplicates. So now if we were to go to another user's um, account and look up conversations, that user, uh, you, this is user number two, this one's user number one, uh, we can both see the same conversation, which is great, but now we need to be able to comment in there, which is where we need to go build that messages routes. So we have this defined in our uh, routes and we just need to create the app controller's messages controller.rb file. And here, this is gonna be very, very simple. This is gonna be the messages controller, we'll inherit from application controller, we'll create a before action to set the conversation, because it's a nested route, we'll always know which conversation it is. And we'll have a private method for that. And we'll say um, at conversation equals current user dot uh, mailbox.conversations.find params conversation ID. And that uh, key changed to conversation ID because now we're in the scoped routes. 
So here we'll have a create action. And this will be what um, says, you know, the current user send message to the recipient, and then we'll have our body and our subject. And then that will return a receipt, just like we saw. We ran this in the console. We'll basically do the same thing here. We just need to set up these three variables. And then once we have the receipt, we can redirect to the receipt dot conversation. Um, so every receipt has a reference to the conversation as its parent, of course, um, so that it knows that. And that's how you'll uh, reference that. But first, we need to go make the form for that so each user could comment in the conversation. So let's go to the show.html erb and let's create a form tag here. Um, and the URL for this is going to be uh, conversation messages path. And we'll pass in the conversation. So this is going to be a regular form tag and not a form for because we're not actually interacting with objects in the controller. So here you'll notice that we're just calling uh, send message and we have to pass in three parameters. The trouble is that those three parameters are actually, um, and actually this is this is wrong, this should be user dot reply to, reply to conversation, um, and this should be at conversation and the body is what we wanna send over. Um, the send message is, is for creating a new conversation. This is how you would reply to a conversation. So um, we need this form to cr basically just send over the body and we don't need to create like a message object for that because we're not creating a new active record object, which is a little frustrating because it would be nice to be able to just use strong parameters to say we want uh, the body and then our form four could use that, but we just don't have that the way that Mailboxer is currently set up as far as I understand. So we're gonna set it up this way where we have a regular form tag and we do like a div and a text area tag called body and a submit tag and an end. And so what this will be is just params body. Um, and we don't need to do the strong params here because we're just passing it in directly and we're assigning it directly as the body of this uh, reply to conversation method. So this is the way that we'll do that. Um, I'd like to see the gem get refactored so that it could be a little bit nicer so that you could just say, let's create a new message for this conversation and that takes care of it. But that's how it works right now. So this form tag should do the trick. And so now you see the form tag and you'll be able to say, you know, if we inspect this, it should go to the conversations messages path as a post. And then if we type in here, uh, testing and click save changes, we'll see that um, we get far enough in that we reply to the conversation, but uh, we forgot to wrap this receipt.conversation in that same conversation path uh, as we had be before. So if you say conversation path around that, that should fix that trouble. And I'm gonna post this again, so we'll see a duplicate of this message, um, but we'll verify that that uh, did correctly redirect this time. So you see that duplicate because before it worked, it just didn't do the redirect correctly. And the second time it did both correctly. So this is cool. The user uh, number one can refresh and see that. Whoa, it's working. And then we can jump to the other user and see that that's working as well. So Mailboxer is connected and that's really all the controller and view code that we had to write for that. Of course, the last piece that we need to get all the basics set up is we need a new action and we need a create action for conversations. So these are going to be the last two pieces and we'll jump into the um, conversations index and create a link to new conversation and it will be the new conversation path 
and we'll create the app views conversations new HTML ERB new conversation and as you might have noticed this is very much um, just like your typical uh, scaffold setup we've just changed the methods around a little bit and used form tags instead of form 4 same thing's gonna work here we're gonna have the conversations path method of post and this time we're gonna have uh, basically three things so we'll have a select tag for the user ID that we want to talk to we're going to have a uh, text field tag for the subject placeholder of subject and uh, the last thing is that we want the text area tag for the body and leave a comment and our submit tag at the very end and so uh, we'll need to also pass in the available options here and there's a method called options from collection for select which is kind of a ridiculous name but it's gonna allow us to say like let's pass in um, all the users you'll display their name but you'll secretly pass us their ID um, and so when we go back to conversations we'll be able to click new conversation and we'll see oops um, <clears throat> this should be nil this is uh, going to now list out the users and so you can create a conversation with one of those users now the thing is I'm currently user number one and I don't really want to allow myself to have a conversation with myself on a website it's kind of crazy so what we actually will need to do for now um, is go into the conversations controller and in the new action we'll set like at recipients equals user dot all and we'll remove the current user from that array um, and this is going to replace that so we'll have recipients there and that's going to just drop it down to only the user number two now the trouble with this of course is that that UI is not the best but also it's going to load up every single user in the database and then subtract you out of that um, and that's fine but it's usually better in production to have like a, a search box you know so you would have like Facebook does where it auto completes users and loads those up via Ajax and does all that so uh, in a future episode we'll talk about refactoring this so it's not such a gnarly little text box but until then uh, we'll just have this like other uh, create conversation and so we'll submit this and the same thing will happen here. So we can look up the recipient by uh, the same method that we did with the messages controller. So we can have a find, and this will just be a regular old params user ID because these aren't scoped to a conversation or anything because we're not using a form four. And so we can get that. And then we can have current user dot send message to at recipient and we don't even need an instance variable because we're not going to use it in a view or anything and then we'll have our params body and our params subject and this will return a receipt just like it did in the message and we can redirect to the uh, conversation path for receipt dot conversation and if we wired all that up correctly clicking save changes redirects us to conversations number two and going back to the conversations index for that person we can see that that conversation is there as well so this is all that you actually have to do to get the bare minimum of messaging working with mailboxer i kind of wish that they would give you this stuff um the views and the controllers or provide a generator for that and maybe they do and I haven't noticed it um, but that is all you really need to do to set all this up you're just passing around data into the send message directly It'd be nicer if they had a way of you know a helper class or something that you could instantiate and save or whatever 
um, that would allow you to go do that. But this works pretty well and allows you to, you know, get conversations on a basic level going within about 20 minutes. So I'm pretty impressed with that. There's a whole lot of other functionality that it provides, like read receipts and email notifications um, and all of those things that we'll talk about in a future episode. But for basic messaging between any type of users in your system, it's about 20 minutes. So that's not bad at all. And uh, if you were to roll this yourself, you could do the same thing in about 20 minutes. The, tr the trick is that Mailboxer will give you all those red receipts and the email notifications and a lot of those things. So unless you really need to customize it or make it super efficient for your application, um, Mailboxer is a good, a good choice if you don't need to do all of that. So uh, until the next episode where we dive into advanced Mailboxer, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, leave a note in the comments if there's any specifics you would like to see around messaging and notifications and whatever around, around messaging. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you next week. Peace.